Welcome back. Today we thought we would explain a bit more about how to develop your brand story. After all, that's where it all begins. If you're setting up a new business, or even if you already have a business, getting your brand story right is an important part of your overall branding. So, so let's, let's get, get started. started. Number one, what's your unique selling point? We've all had that moment, right? Someone asks you, what do you do? And you scramble around for words to try and explain your business in a clear and interesting way. Quite often, you might not have a clue what to say, as it can be hard to describe what you actually do. As a small business owner, you wear multiple hats. You're an accountant, a salesperson, a graphic designer, an advertiser, and so on. So, what answer do you actually give? Every business has a unique thing that makes them stand out. You may not think yours does, or you may not be able to see what it is right away. It can be a real struggle to find the one thing that makes you different. We call this your USP, or unique selling point, which is the main pillar of your overall brand story. Fact of the matter is, we all started somewhere. If you've got your own business, somewhere along the line, you had an idea or a reason for starting it. Some people plan for years before they launch their business. Others throw caution to the wind, leave their nine to five and start the very next day. So what made you start your business? What were the circumstances that made you take a leap of faith and start working for yourself? Were you turning a passion into a business or a hobby into a full-blown venture? Or were you simply sick of working for someone else? Whatever it is, write it down. Basically, what it boils down to is what is your motivation? Understanding the reasons behind setting up your business and what motivated you in the first place can be a great way to find your USP. However, your USP doesn't always need to be related to something external. For example, it could simply be that you have a quirky personality that can help people gain more confidence. This would in turn help others with their business by enabling them to succeed at public speaking or approaching others at networking events. It doesn't always have to be that deep. So, if it's your personality that makes you stand out, release it. If it's knowledge you have, share it. And if it's a particular skill you have, showcase it to the world. All of these things are unique selling points and will make your business interesting and different. Most importantly, it will help you answer that question. The one we had in the beginning, what do you do? Number two, what are your strengths and weaknesses? So we have your USP, what's next? On both a personal and business level, it's important to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. You don't want to offer accounting services when you're not good at budgeting. It will require a bit of digging and reflection to understand what your weaknesses are. It's not always easy to identify them. Try not to think about your weaknesses in a general sense. I'll give you an example for this. Let's say I'm okay at doing a bit of coding and I know my way around it a little bit. In a general sense, I wouldn't say that was a weakness of mine. However, when you think about having to code websites, for example, that would be a different story. In that sense, I would say it is a weakness, as it would hold back my business in terms of time management, but also wouldn't be able to turn out a quality product. Another example could be perfectionism. Perfectionism can be seen as both a strength and weakness. Being highly focused on turning out the best work possible can obviously be a massive strength. However, once that starts to impact your output, your time or your mental health, it becomes a weakness. Knowing these things about yourself will help you understand where to focus your energy in your business and what things are better left alone or can perhaps be delegated to someone else. If you find it hard to figure out your strengths and weaknesses, it can be helpful to ask your friends and family what they think. They might be able to point out things you hadn't thought about yourself. Write everything down and make it. And make a big list for yourself, as it will help you later on down the line when you're creating brand strategy it will remind you to always play to your strengths. Number three, what will you offer? Now that we have your USB and strengths and weaknesses, it will be a lot easier to figure out what kind of services or products you want to offer in your business. Let's take a look at the example we mentioned before. Your unique selling point was your quirky personality. You're easy to chat to and people gravitate towards you. Your strengths could be kindness, openness, being helpful and being curious. 
This could easily transform into a service-based business. For example, you could be a motivational speaker or a life and business coach. More than likely though, you probably already have an idea of what service or product you want to offer. Perhaps this is what got you motivated to start a business in the first place. Both services and products require a lot of time, effort and potential funding. And usually you won't be able to offer your dream service or product right away. So, where do we start? It's a good idea to make what I like to call a master list of ideas. This is a big brain dump list of all the services you would like to offer. Try and remove the things that are similar, that you're not 100% sure about, or that don't give enough value to your potential customers. Then arrange everything from things that need the least amount of time or funding to the most amount of time or funding. This will give you a good idea of what you could start offering customers immediately while you gear up for bigger things in the future. It will also give you a good list of potential future services or products that you can refer back to whenever you need new ideas. While working on your master list of ideas, just remember to keep in mind your strengths, weaknesses and unique selling point. Make sure they align with all of the ideas you're writing down, because you don't want to end up with a bunch of services or products that actually play into your weaknesses. You don't want to set yourself up for failure immediately, do you? Number four. What are your brand values? They play a significant role in building deep relationships with your customers. In a nutshell, they are foundational beliefs or ideals that your brand stands for. Your values should reflect what is truly important to your business, as they will become an integral part of your brand strategy later down the line. Brand values can help you to tell your brand story as they will reflect your USP and influence the services and products you offer. With competition constantly increasing, brand values can help define you. They serve as a way to express identity and personality and offer genuine connection with your audience beyond any marketing tricks. Basically, they offer a human element that your customers can identify and align with. For most people, coming up with brand values can be kind of vague. Things like reliability, quality, luxury, or value for money might pop into your head immediately. But it's important to also explain how your business embodies these values. It will help you to distinguish why it is essential to you. For example, quality can be a broad term, so perhaps expertise, attention to detail or craftsmanship will be more suitable to your business. Try to dig a little deeper and find the values that perfectly describe your ideals. When you pick your brand values, just keep the following in mind. Be authentic and honest, build connections with your customers and pick something that sets you apart from other people. Sometimes brand values can be confused with your brand goals, but they're not the same thing. Your goals will define where you hope your business will go in the future and what you'd like to achieve along the way. Values are how your business behaves as it gets there. Let me give you an example of how goals and values work together. You may have a big financial goal you would like to meet in your business. In order to achieve this, you would need to sell 500 products of lower quality to hit your goal with the time frame you set. However, your brand values discourage you from doing this as your business prides itself on quality and craftsmanship. You can see how the two may contradict each other. We won't discuss business goals further in this video, but I thought it was important to mention the difference between the two. Just keep in mind that your values should influence the rest of your business and your goals so everything works together smoothly. So there we have it, your USP, strengths and weaknesses, services, products and your brand values will form your brand story. They are the four pillars of your brand that everything else will be based on, from audience to brand strategy and even your logo design. So I hope this helps you get started and if you're stuck, just remember, whatever your skill, your services or your personality traits, take the best bits and build around it. If you like what you've seen here today, then leave us a comment below and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more content from us. Make sure you join our newsletter as well for free marketing tips and advice. That's it for now. Hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.